In the highlights package that we've just seen there, uh, it obviously deals a lot with Oscar's security consciousness. Now, we've been told over and over again in this trial about how he was concerned about crime, how he'd been involved directly and indirectly uh, in various uh, incidents of crime. Uh, the two things that immediately now emerge is that he had not really even checked if his alarm system, if all uh, the beacons uh, and all the eyes, as it were, were all in the places they were meant to be in and if they were indeed working. Yes. Uh, the notable thing about it is that that has been brought out by the state, by Harry Nell. From Oscar's perspective and the defense perspective, it was important for them to show that because of past history, because of real life experiences, um, Oscar was that paranoid uh, and reacted in that way when he allegedly heard the sound. And of course, Nell is now countering that by pointing to aspects that don't fit with that story. Because if you are that concerned, if to the extent of paranoia about your security, then your security would have been 100% in place and you'd have been conscious of it on the night in question. And without having any reason to believe that his alarm system outside on the perimeter wasn't working or fully functioning, his first assumption is that the, 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 the would-be intruders would have found time earlier in the day mm. to disable it so as to be able to put that ladder against his wall mm. and then climb into the bathroom. Yes, I think a characteristic of Oscar's case is that there are any number of assumptions that he claimed that he is making and that here in the state is alleging don't stand up. And that is just one of them. And of course, I mean, the other issue that Kherinal was at uh, pains to point out today was that Oscar Pistorius, you've never actually reported any incident of crime that happened to you at the Silverwoods Estates where you live. And Oscar conceded that the only uh, incident of crime that he, he's been a victim of was the stealing of, uh, or at least the missing watch, uh, when uh, the, the, the officials, the, the, the police officers came to his house. Yes, I think you've articulated it correctly. And therefore, Kherinal will argue, and therefore, uh, this claim of yours that you were that um, concerned about your safety and in particular river safety is simply convenient. It is uh, something that you have contrived. What about this thing of Oscar Pistorius as far as now procedure, uh, you know, feeling tired and being unable to keep up? We saw a little earlier uh, he was being asked questions about his alarm system. He said something. He was challenged on it. Then he said, no, I didn't say it. And Nell says, what do you mean you did just say it? And then he said, I'm tired. Uh, at which point the judge then says, oh, are you tired? I mean, could, could we have had an adjournment there? Because the witness was tired? Uh, Bongani, I, I had been in the, working in the courts for many years, and then I was charged for speeding. And I was in the dock, and I was in the witness stand. And I tell you, I started to feel tired. <laughs> so uh, the witness stand cross-examination is a very tortuous environment. And I can quite understand that he is feeling tired. Not so much tired as weary. Uh, this is, has been a terrible burden on him for a very long time. And, and Harry Nell, we'll all agree, is adding to that burden with efficiency and effectiveness. All right, we'll, we'll come back to this issue because I still want to know whether or not being tired is a good enough reason to get an adjournment, but we'll come back to that. Uh, if you've just joined us, of course, uh, uh, court has adjourned for the day, but we do have some more highlights packages because Oscar Pistorius uh, also testified about the alarms in the house and Gheri now spent some time on that issue.